hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel please subscribe uh, to my channel uh, almost 90 to 93 percent of students are not subscribing so they are watching but not subscribing that is not good please subscribe and go to the go through the videos and study well all the best for your exams so next topic we are having the properties of functions and as well as functions of carbohydrates nucleic acids and proteins and lipids so what are carbohydrates okay let's these are all biomolecules okay so what are carbohydrates so carbohydrates are nothing but carbo means carbon hydro means okay hydrogen is there oxygen oxygen is there so they are in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 okay now the properties so chemical composition is nothing but what the carbohydrate uh, is nothing but organic compound why because carbon is there so how they are arranged in what ratio carbon if carbon molecule is one molecule hydrogen has to be two oxygen has to be one respectively so then only you can call them as a carbon carbohydrates in terms of chemical composition so why do we have we need these carbohydrates what are these the carbohydrates means imagine you take up food okay in that also carbohydrate will be there you take up uh, fruits carbohydrate will be there you take biscuits anything so you take uh, carbohydrates will be there what they will give they will they will act as an energy source okay so carbohydrates can exist in many forms uh, classification is there monosaccharide if only single sugar molecule is there we call it as a monosaccharide saccharide means sugar molecule if double uh, sugar molecules are there then we call it as a uh, this thing why it is sugar molecule we are calling because the carbohydrate itself is nothing but a kind of a glucose molecules so that's why sugar molecules we are calling so mono if single molecule di if two sugar molecules are there if poly if many chain or you can say long chain of sugar molecules are there solubility so most carbohydrates are soluble in water due to the, its hydrophilic nature in uh, which arises from the presence of hydroxyl group functions so energy source definitely it lacked as a primary source of energy for living organisms so for example we are having glucose it's, which is nothing but a monosaccharide is particularly very important in uh, and is already readily broken down in cellular respiration to produce atp so when you take glucose it's a direct uh, atp or direct energy that's why whenever uh, the people are uh, in constipation cases and all and uh, when the when kids usually uh, the kids or the women when they are not having energy they give them the glucose that uh, a powder they give why because it will it's readily broken down to in cellular respiration to produce atp now the energy currency of the cell also we call it as okay so next structural support it not only as a food or as an energy but also it gives you the structural support for example in plants like cellulose and all carbohydrates are there in chitin and all carbohydrates and all these cellulose and chitin also is made up of carbohydrates and uh, they are a, they are also carbohydrates uh, they provide structural support now cellulose forms the cell wall of a plant cell so which is giving them the rigidity and the strength we have in the previous class we have discussed how cell rigidity is and how it is helpful while chitin formed in the exoskeleton of the arthropods okay they will also uh, you know and the cell walls of the fungi so they will also give the rigidity and the strength okay so that's how they protect uh, they uh, carbohydrates give us a structural support also not only the energy source next speaking about uh, storage so whenever the animals and plants uh, wants to store excess carbohydrates okay uh, for the future energy purpose okay because they store it as carbohydrate in the when the animals or the plants ran out of energy to perform the physiological functions that time this carbohydrate will be used to produce atp or energy so animals store carbohydrates in a form of glycogen okay in the liver and as well as muscles that's why more carbohydrates do you eat more fat you get that is nothing but coming from the uh, just above the liver that's why you will be will get the big tummy okay while plants store them in as starch in specialized structures like tubers and seeds okay like tubers and seeds it will store the energy okay so this is how the structure looks like monosaccharide single molecule is there disaccharide two molecules polysaccharide many molecules okay so that's about the uh, carbohydrate very brief introduction next speaking about nucleic acids nucleic acid we know that nucleic acids are nothing but carbon uh, dna and rna so chemical composition 
so they are macromolecules which are composed up of nucleotide monomers for example uh, for dna we, we are having the a g c t that is adenine guanine cytosine and thymine these are the nitrogenous bases but they are also having the phosphate groups and sugar molecule these are the three things they contain sugar molecule that is ribose in rna and deoxyribose in dna one component the second component phosphate group okay or an and the third thing is nitrogenous bases nitrogenous bases adenosine adenine guanine cytosine and thymine in dna whereas in rna we are having thymine is replaced by uracil t will, will not be there u will be there okay understood so there are three things in that uh, phosphate group is same for both but whereas other two things like uh, sugar molecule is different for rna that is ribose in rna deoxyribose in dna okay in the name itself it is there dna means deoxyribose so sugar molecule is deoxyribose next phosphate group is same next thing is nitrogenous bases that is adn is made up of four different nucleotides that is nothing but we are having adenine guanine cytosine thymine that is agct whereas rna is made up of agcu instead of t it is u instead of thymine it is uracil in rna so double helix structure so dna has got double helix structure so it has got two kind of structures the uh, the genetic material of the most organism is dna and form it forms a double helix structure also with two polynucleotide strands that means two strands of dna will give you the double strands of dna they wound around each other how they wound around each other this is how okay this is dna double stranded rna is single stranded so here it is in rna uracil is there in dna it is thymine is there that is the difference okay next replication and transmission dna undergoes replication a process by which genetic information is copied okay your genetic information will be copied in the replication and then it will be transferred into, into transferred into daughter cells during the cell division that ensures the inheritance of genetic traits from the gen generation to the next generation okay that's how that's what dna and rna uh, properties and functions okay next speaking moving to the proteins proteins are nothing but lot of amino acids chains will be there or you can say more amino acids are brought together you will get the protein so amino acid composition proteins are composed of amino acid monomers linked together by a peptide bonds to form a polypeptide chain okay this chain is nothing but if more number of amino acids are there and they are linked together by peptide bonds you will get a protein now the structural diversity how it is diversified the proteins exhibit one range of structures they have got uh, amino acid sequence which is nothing but a primary sequence secondary structures is alpha helix and beta sheets tertiary structures overall three dimensional structure and quaternary structures that is multiple polypeptide chains will be there in this so this is also has got a structural diversity in terms of classification primary secondary tertiary and quaternary whereas functional groups you know protein contains various functional groups also for example the terminals amino acid terminals uh, uh, if one terminal is amine group another terminal is carboxyl group okay so which contribute to their chemical properties and interactions so now coming to the functions so proteins involve many functions in that general uh, explanation is given here enzymatic activity so proteins sometimes act as enzymes what do you mean by enzymes they either catalyze they will increase the reaction or decrease the reaction or they stop the reaction but they will not be a part of reaction understanding okay so uh, enzymes uh, here proteins will act as enzymes also they catalyze biochemical reactions by lowering the activation energy which is required for the reaction to occur imagine some reaction has to occur for that uh, activation energy is so much 100 100 kilocalorie now i will reduce that into 50 that work is done by the proteins okay now the enzymes are essential for metabolic pathways cellular processes and digestion definitely digestive enzymes are there cellular enzymes are there for that also it will be helpful and metabolic pathways also lot of enzymes will involve next we are talking moving to the structural support how this support they will act as support okay they provide structural uh, uh, support to the cells and as well as tissues examples we are having fibrous protein is there like collagen keratin okay they give a structural framework for framework for connective tissues and hair respectively so collagen will give a 
a structural support for connective tissues whereas keratin will give the structural support for hairs example now sorry next topic is uh, next function is transport so we know that hemoglobin is one of the example which carries the blood ox uh, oxygen it will uh, travel through the blood it will take oxygen from the lung and then it will travel entire body and it will, give, will reach the oxygen to all the parts of the molecule okay so that's how the transport function works next hormones and signaling so for example some proteins such as insulin and growth hormones are there no so they act as chemical messengers they will regulate physiological processes and signaling pathways in the organism so hormones and signaling plays a very important role in every uh, uh, organism so immune response we uh, i just explained about immune system in the previous class it will act as a army which will produce the antibodies when the foreign antigen comes they will go and bind and then they will kill those antigens so we will not get any disease like that so antibodies are nothing but proteins only so they are produced by the immune system so recognize and neutralize the foreign invaders they will go they will uh, detect the foreign ant antigens they will neutralize it okay uh, like for example it can be the viruses or a bacteria okay all those things and then so by doing so it makes your body safe so it plays a very crucial role in immune defense so these are some of the functions enzymatic activity structural activity transport hormones and signaling and human responses so this is a, the structure of the protein okay we are having n terminal amine and carboxyl terminal okay so with respect to we are talking about one uh, you know uh, different different things so next topic is uh, sub topic is lipids so lipids we know that they are hydrophobic molecules that means the water hating molecules that are insoluble in water they are not soluble in water whereas carbohydrates are soluble in water but soluble in non polar solvents so these lipids are soluble in non polar sol solvents which means chloroform ether all these things chemical diversity so lipids can encompass a diverse group of molecules they include examples we are talking about fats oils phospholipids steroids waxes these all are the examples or different types of lipids okay they have got a distinct chemical structures and properties next energy density so lipids are definitely highly energy dense molecules they are having high energy fats means it has having high energy oils means it is having high energy it is providing more than twice the energy per gram of as per the carbohydrates imagine 10 gram of carbohydrate is there and 5 gram of uh, oil is there both are giving the same new energy okay that means almost two times of carbohydrates it will give the energy even including proteins also so a functions energy storage definitely the lipids will act as a long-term energy storage molecule okay so some people will tell you uh, this person is very fat that means he is having a lot of fat in it so that means this fat itself is actually is excessive whatever you have uh, uh, taken whatever you have ate okay eaten so out of which only few things our body requires the rest everything it will store as a fat so it's nothing but that's how we call it as energy storage next speaking about structural uh, components so lipids play a structural roles in biological membranes example we are in phospholipids okay uh, the lipid bilayer of the cell membrane providing a barrier separates uh, to the cell this what what this phospholipids will do it's nothing but a bilayer okay so what it will give it will give the like how plasma membrane we expect no similarly it will give the protection to uh, to the cells okay providing a barrier that separates the cell internal and external neuron similarly what we spoke about the plasma membrane next we are talking about insulation and protection we are having adipose tissue one of the example which is composed of a predominantly of lipids which will act as insulation insulation means which should ins give the uh, protection from the internal environment and outer outer environment uh, for example uh, temperatures okay all those things so in plants it will act as examples are cutin and sugarin so lipid based substances are there which will protect coating on leaves and roots and all okay in leaves roots and all there is extra layer will be there no? that is also made up of lipids okay next cell signaling lipids such as steroids and uh, you know uh, isocyanoids so these two things will act as a signaling molecules so they are uh, 
small uh, what you call uh, lipids but they will act as a signaling molecule that regulate various physiological process including it can be the inflammation immune response and even reproduction also okay like estrogen testosterone all those things will come under these things like hormones next lipids we are having phospholipids triglycerides cholesterol these are some of the examples okay they will store major function is storage of the energy okay next summary in all four biomolecules we discussed carbohydrates nucleic acids proteins and lipids they are all essential biomolecules with distinct properties and functions that play a very crucial role in structure function and regulation of the organism so if you want to be fit structurally if your body has to function properly if it has to regulate proper things okay you need to have all these things nucleic acid should be working proper carbohydrate should be working proper protein should be working proper lipids also should be there to store your energy next understanding their properties and functions of fundamental understanding is complexity of life processes and biochemical pathways so once you understand the properties of uh, and functions of these things so you can understand the uh, you know the whatever the complexity of life process is there in better way next topic is stem cells and their application we'll discuss in the next class